Hello everyone and welcome to Jumper Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY. And today we have a service call for a fan call unit. Thank you, it's everyone tuning into Jumper Man Tech. This is a follow up video for a service call that I previously did. And the idea here is to replace that actuator valve. The space that's in here is terrible. And that one connection for the bottom of the header over there is just too dangerous. Unfortunately, our shutoff valves are right here, and this is half inch. My idea was to go down the line where I have more access in this area and put the actuator here. I pre-assembled this right here. This is three quarter copper. Here's our actuator valve body, and here's a ball valve. These are soldered connections super clean but for the edges i prefer brazing so i have one side here coupling brazed and on this side i have a slip coupling so the idea is to cut over here and install this there then run some wires and have our actuator over there where we have space because i really can't get in there really here's the room we're working in we have an access panel and right there, we have a shutoff valve for the room. These two valves, the supply and return, are now both closed. Look how they mounted these pipe sensors. Super loose. We're gonna get this out of the way and cut this insulation so where we can fit this and braze in our connections. And it's gonna be a little something like that so now it can fit and I can then make my connections. But first we gotta cut the pipe and drain the remaining water in the line. Set up a plastic bag with a pan, got my pipe cutter on here. Let's cut it and drain the remaining water. All right, we're beginning to drain. Let's just make sure that that valve holds. All right, we stopped draining. Now let me cut this side. All right, so the valves are holding. This side is cut and this side is cut. I'm gonna take some sandpaper and prep the edges. Everything is now cut and sanded. The valves are holding. One side of this coupling is already connected. I'm just gonna shove that in, braze this end. This one, since it's straight pipe, this is a coupling with no stop. So when you put this in, you can slide this. So let's get this in. What I'll do is connect this one end, okay? And then this end is like perfectly like cut to space. And I'm simply just gonna slide over that one coupling go and just get that in the middle but pretty much this is gonna be the setup here and we got to braze our connections all right guys this is it I put the valve this way because we have a bleeder right here and I want to be able to close the valve and the other way there's another pipe in the way so this seemed to be the best setup in my opinion the actuator is gonna go on top here Got to braze this coupling, both sides, and then one side of this one. Thing is, we're going to braze it at a much higher temperature than soldering as I soldered these two valves right here. So we could either use a wet rag or some sort of heat absorption putty to put on here, here, possibly to protect this side of the pipe and possibly this one. But the main thing is that we don't melt the solder on these two or a possible elbow back here. Put some putty there, put some putty there, here and there. I'm using Hot Block by Solder Weld. It says it's a lifetime guarantee and you can reuse it. We'll see about that. And yeah, hopefully this works and doesn't <laughs> melt my solder. So let's go ahead and light this place up.
Okay, I got that one. Now let's braise this one. I put a wet rag on this on top because this did get a bit hot. So just to be a little safe, I'll put this wet rag. Let's finish up this last coupling. I'll pray for the best. <laughs> So we opened up the valve in the hallway, so we should have water up to here. So this connection is good. Let's open this up. Water is filling the coil. And we have no leaks on our side. Water is nice and cold and there's no leaks. Man, that's a beautiful thing. We're going to need some half inch insulation to finish that up then we got to mount the actuator get some bx run that across into the control panel but man the hardest part is done all right guys here's our actuator we're gonna add some connectors and some bx here's our actuator took off the cover we got these two wires what i want to do is get rid of this and run the bx inside i already ran two wires in and let's prep this so it's nice and easy. So I ran the BX inside, made my connections. Now I'm going to close that up, put the cover, mount that on the valve, and then run this BX into the control panel. All right, there's everything. Opened up the control panel. These are our two wires for the old actuator. So I'm going to run the BX in, connect these two wires, and mount it for on our valve and then we can test everything. All right, actuator is on and I ran that in here and made my connections. So from here, we can test everything and as long as everything is good, just gotta insulate that pipe and we're done here. In my previous visit, I did get the heating and cooling to work, but the issue was that in heating, the most we would get was about 81 and a half degrees supply air and that is because even though the actuator closed and the actuator worked the valve itself wasn't fully closing so we were mixing cooling with the heating so 81 degrees doesn't really cut it let's go ahead and check this temperature look at that 93.4 93.6 and climbing so we know the heating works and now we'll put on the cooling we got 55 degrees Install. <laughs> this system is ready to roll 12,000 BTUs of raw cooling power huh? <laughs> All right, so pretty much from here, we gotta close up this electrical panel, put the two pipe sensors back, and just insulate the rest of this piping, but that's pretty much it. Everything works, we got no leaks, and everyone's gonna be comfortable. If anyone found this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe, as I come out with new videos every week. I'll catch you all next time.